The plan to spend £10.5 million in uh, enhancing border controls at UK ports in preparation for the European Union's entry-exit system, the EES, is re really money wasted. While this investment may appear prudent on the surface, it is in reality an inadequate response to the challenges that lie ahead. It doesn't matter whether your concerns are about the incidence of illegal migration or about trying to uh, get through immigration in a, in, in a speedy time. 10.5 million is going to do very little more, uh, li little more than simply apply a temporary patch to a problem that demands a much more comprehensive uh, approach, a much bigger solution. The EES, slated to be implemented in uh, by the EU this November is a significant shift in how border checks will be conducted and non-EU travellers including UK citizens will need to undergo fingerprinting, have their photographs taken upon their first entry into the EU and with this data stored for three years uh, that will then be accessible. And the system, though designed to bolster security, raises substantial concerns about the efficiency and the effectiveness of our border controls, particularly at key ports like Dover, the Euro Tunnels Terminal at Folkestone, London, St Pancras Station and so on. The allocation of 10.5 million split equally among these three locations is intended to mitigate the risk of queues and disruptions. But let's critically assess whether this funding is sufficient to the task in hand. Quite frankly, already the backlog at um, the Euro Tunnel is simply staggering. It's better, of course, you could say. It's better than trying to get in and out of Hungary, but not much better. Firstly, the sheer scale of the infrastructure and the technological upgrades required uh, to accommodate the new EES processes. The port of Dover, Eurotunnel, St Pancras are among the busiest transit points in the UK, handling millions of passengers annually. The introduction of biometric checks will inevitably and significantly slow down processing times, potentially leading to significant delays. The 3.5 million earmarked for each site is unlikely to cover the full cost of the necessary enhancements, let alone address the broader operational changes that will arise. 3.5 million, what is that? That's, uh, <laughs> that's a make-up budget for Star Wars. Um, you know, secondly, the focus on these three locations neglects the wider impact that EES will have on the UK's border management. Other ports and airports across the country will also face increased pressure as the new checks will be required for all non-EU travellers entering the EU. What about, what about the checks for those um, ports? <laughs> Folkestone isn't the only place. Dover isn't the only place. The, uh, St Pancras isn't the only place. The concentration of funds on just three sites might alleviate some immediate concerns there, but it does little to prepare the entire UK border system for the upcoming changes. And it's, it's so... We've had years to sort out this and to get ready for this. The funding doesn't address the long-term implications of the EES on UK-EU relations. And post-Brexit, the UK's ability to influence EU post policies is limited, and our ports and border facilities are now at the front line of these changes. And a more strategic approach would, not, would involve not just reactive funding but proactive engagement with the EU to shape and possibly delay the implementation of such systems until our infrastructure is genuinely ready. And genuinely ready means proper, proper investment. And finally, the underlying issue of workforce readiness cannot be overlooked. New technology and infrastructure are only as effective as the personnel operating them. And the funding announced makes no mention of investments in training or increased staff levels to manage the expected increase in processing times. And without a well-trained and adequately staffed workforce, even the more, more advanced even the most advanced technology will struggle to prevent the bottlenecks and the delays that the EES is likely to cause. So while 10.5 <clears throat> million in funding may seem a lot, it may provide some short-term relief. It may provide uh, some semblance of the, the illusion of actually doing something rather than nothing. It's ultimately inadequate measure that fails to address the broader 
changes, the challenges, the problems posed by the EU's entry-exit system. A more comprehensive, strategic approach is required, one that includes not only financial investment but also diplomatic engagement, infrastructure development, training across all affected locations, uh, a workforce preparedness. Without such an approach, this will be as bad as the, uh, 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 as the Heathrow um, automatic passport gates. The UK risks severe disruptions at its borders. It undermines both our security and the smooth flow of travel and trade. It is a beacon to illegal behaviour. And it's a testament to our inadequacy.